If you've ever wanted to achieve goals, figure out how to set them, this is the video for you. In this video, we're gonna summarize Andrew Humerman's podcast where he has about a solid two hours of super amazing nuanced scientific information. Andrew Humerman podcast is such an amazing podcast. We're so excited to have this in our ecosystem today. In this video, I'm gonna be summarizing and consolidating some of the major points in Andrew Humerman's podcast episode. Before Andrew Humerman starts to talk about all these different points and tools to help you achieve your goals, he goes on to say, some context and that's that goals require multiple parts of your brain to work there's a bunch of areas that go off that when they go off together help you to ultimately achieve your goal and those are called neural circuits I think it's important to explain what he mentioned the first one is the amygdala where you try to avoid punishments and all the things that kind of like get you fearful and you don't want to get embarrassed and all those kind of things the second one is the ventral striatum I hope I'm saying that right Andrew Newman, don't shoot me which is what gives you the ability to take action or stop an action stop Stop and go is what he calls it. And then there's the cortex, which is planning and thinking. And then there's what he calls the orbital frontal cortex, which involves emotions. The point is not to memorize these names, but the point, I think that this is really important because I think when you go out to achieve or set a goal, there's a lot of things at play with, and all of these things have to come together to help you to achieve the goal. And I, I love that he mentions that because I think those are key things that you have to be aware of that your body and mind goes through a series of different things that kind of get you moving. If you look at a lot of books these days, right, there's a bunch of books that like have all these acronyms that help you to achieve goals it's like where they're called smart goals smarter goals whatever goals all these millions of things and not to mock these things but that these things are made so that people can kind of have an easy way of kind of remembering what they need to remember but essentially they all boil down to a few core things you decide what you're going to do you need to say you're going to do it you need to do it and you need to assess if you've done it or not and then there's a bunch of little nuanced things that can help you along the way before we get into exactly how to start a goal achieve a goal and assess the goal i want to talk about something he mentioned which i thought was pretty important he calls the peripersonal space and the extra personal space. The peripersonal space is your body and sort of what you interact with immediately from right here from your body to what's directly in front of you. And extra personal space, which is the stuff that's beyond you. And the importance of knowing that is that when you wanna achieve a goal that is far, you need to realize that you're going on your extra personal space. You're going into something that is not directly in front of you. It's something that is beyond you. So it's just, it just helps you make that sort of connection. How do you actually choose a goal? He talks about dopamine. I'm not gonna go into depth about dopamine, but dopamine being the thing that your body gets or your brain gets that rewards you, that gives you this really, really good feeling. When it comes to how do you choose a goal? Ultimately, no one can tell you. I think the idea is that when you choose a goal, that goal is whatever gives you dopamine. I won't be able to decide what gives you that. Right? Someone might get dopamine out of mountain or something, but that might not give me the same dopamine. What is it that you wanna achieve that would give you the dopamine fill that when you achieve that thing, you'd get that sort of satisfaction out of achieving that. That is how you're going to decide what goal to achieve. The goals can be long-term and they could also be short-term. Ultimately, even the long-term goals are going to be broken down into short milestones. Let's get into how do you actually start a goal? So the first thing he talks about is visualization. To visualize the end result of the goal, the research sort of points to that in the start of the goal, Visualizing the end can sort of give you a little catapult to get moving, but as you're progressing towards the goal, visualizing the end result is not the most effective way of staying motivated to continue your goal. There is a better way, and that is to visualize the opposite of achieving your goal. In other words, failing at your goal. If I don't achieve this goal, if I don't do this goal, if I don't take the action I need to take and I fail, what will that look like? So if I'm trying to lose X amount of pounds, if I don't lose pounds and I gain pounds, what does that look like for me? How does that affect me? What will my life be like? And when you look at that sort of failure, you will be more inclined to be motivated to achieve and to continue on with the goals. Visualizing the end results can be good only in the start of the goal. Then after that, what you want to do is start to visualize or think about if you were to fail or not pursue this goal, what would your life be like? The next thing that you can do to start the goal is to realize that you need to limit your options, which goals you wanna pursue. He suggests that one to two a year is going to be plenty enough for the average person. And it's probably going to be pretty difficult that by itself. Now we all have multiple goals we have to juggle. If you have too many at the same time, you may not achieve any of them. So the idea is limit the options, decide which goal you're going to pursue first, which one second, figure out what big goal you pursue for that year. The next thing is to make sure you choose the right 
type of goal. Don't choose something super easy and don't choose something impossible. You need to choose something challenging for you, something sort of right outside what you what your limits appear to be. Losing 100 pounds in the next month. This is like an impossible goal, right? It doesn't even make sense. So a lot of people create these goals that are really unreasonable. And the literature supports that that's not effective for you and can actually demotivate you to achieve these goals. A lot of people push this idea that if it's not big, then it's not worthy of even pursuing. And the truth is, a lot of things are worthy of pursuing. You have to decide that. The idea is not to deter you from a, a magnificent goal that you want to achieve. The idea is to break it down and make it reasonable to achieve. The other point is that it's good to fail, but don't fail too much. When you fail at something or you make errors, your brain kind of realizes, oh, okay, that didn't work. Then this is what I should be doing. Failing actually gives your brain information, helps you figure out what to do and puts you on course. You don't want to be challenging yourself to the point that you are failing all the time. There's research that shows that you should only be failing just about 15% of the time. So you want to choose a goal where you will mess up probably, but not mess up 50% or 90%. You don't want to be failing that much, right? So that I found was super key because a lot of times we think that we shouldn't be failing at all. And other times we set these things to be way too beyond our reach and we're failing way too much. How do you actually start accomplishing your goal? And you need to set concrete steps. So you need to really be super specific about what you want to achieve. You don't want to be subjective or too, you know, like I want to become fit. What does that mean? A lot of people say, I want to be rich. I want to be wealthy. Like these are super, super general things that don't give your body and mind the specifics that you need to achieve these things. You might say, I want to be able to do, you know, 20 push-ups or 30 push-ups in one minute or something like that by X amount of time. And then you break down those into milestones. And what Andrew Huberman suggests is weekly milestones or weekly assessments in a way. So when you set the milestone, you want to figure out what you need to be doing do those and by the end of the week assess did you do it or did you not do it and potentially readjust to set yourself on course and that's pretty much most of what you need to know about how to start a goal how to achieve a goal one thing i found were some tools about how do you actually stay motivated during during a goal andrew Huberman talks about potentially before you start a goal you can focus in on some on a very limited visual point that's sort of across the room or in front of you before you start a short-term goal. Now that could actually help you get started and gives you some adrenaline, gives you some focus. What they found was there was some research where they tested two groups of people, had them put 15 pound weights and to go towards a goal. And they found that when they told one group to look at the goal line, that group did 23% better than the group that wasn't directed. And they did it with 70% less effort. So setting some focus on something is a pretty good, what I would call meditation, to putting yourself in motion. The other motivator I found really interesting was something called self-imaging. What they found was that people who were to achieve a goal, if they were to look at potential self-images of themselves in the future that depict them not achieving the goal, that by itself motivated them to continue. So whereas some people say, visualize the end result of success, what this research was saying is visualize yourself in the future of potentially not achieving this goal, like what it will look like. Looking at that motivates you to be like, okay, I want to continue. One thing I found a little bit elusive in the podcast was the dopamine reward. Andrew Huberman mentioned that when you achieve the milestones or tasks, you should reward yourself cognitively. So in a sense of just realizing you stayed on track, you're on track with your goal, maybe checking off a box he mentioned. So some sort of cognitive reward. Whereas there's a lot of sort of like things out there online where you, you can reward yourself with things that you want or reward yourself with some potential external pleasure. And that's something I would like to you know address to Andrew Huberman, you know, what he thought about those sort of rewards. But what he mentioned specifically in the podcast is rewarding yourself cognitive, cognitively. Is that enough? I don't know. And, but that is what he's recommending that in that podcast. And I think these are some of the main points in that podcast episode. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you want, I'll do more. Thank you to Andrew Huberman for that exceptional podcast episode on how to achieve goals. A link is in the description below if you want to check out the full two hours with amazingly great scientific and nuanced information that he has in there. I'll see you in the next one.